Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 3.3, the polynomials in factored form. So just a reminder, the family of polynomials are those that are sharing a common characteristic and have the same degree. Um, we're especially going to worry about the ones that have the same roots as well in this particular unit. Um, and so we're just going to look at how to sketch something in factored form. Uh, previously we used standard form and we used the degree we use the leading coefficient, we use the y-intercept and the n-behaviors. Uh, now we're going to add these two things, the zeros and the orders, and we're going to talk about what the order is in a second. Um, so first of all, when we want to sketch this, we're going to find the zeros. So just like with a quadratic, we just f set each of these factors to be zero. So x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Now the order of those zeros is the exponent of that factor, so the factor's exponent. So here you can see the exponent is 1, and here 1, and here 2. So the order here is 1, and the order here is 1, and the order here is 2. So we can just look at the factored form and find what the orders are. Um, using that, we can figure out what the degree is. I mean, you could expand this whole thing, but that would take uh, quite a while, especially if you have a really big um, a really big polynomial. So what we can do instead is just find the sum of the orders and that will give us the uh, degree. So in this case it's 1 plus 1 plus 2. The degree is going to be 4. And of course the important part of that is that it is even. So we're just going to make sure we know that that is even. And the leading coefficient is going to be the product of the coefficients. So you can see here I've got a negative and then a 1, 1, and another 1. So the leading coefficient is negative times 1 to the 1 times 1 to the 1 times 1 squared. And it's really important that we put these exponents in, especially if they're not 1s. So it becomes negative 1. And the important part of that, of course, is that it is negative. And so that gives us the end behaviors as well. So we know that as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Okay? So the last thing that we're going to figure out is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is going to be the product of the constants. So all the constant terms that you see there, plus this negative right here. So this negative also, and then 2 times negative 1 times negative 3 squared. So y-intercept, we'll write it in, negative times 2 to the 1 times negative 1 to the 1 times negative 3 squared. And if we multiply all these together, we're going to get positive 18. Okay, so when we want to graph this, we're just going to draw a set of axes. And actually we say sketch because we're going to do a very inaccurate graph. It's going to be sort of squished up and uh, funny looking, so we're not going to worry too much about getting everything exactly right. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to just write in what the zeros are. So step one is to write in the zeros and also to write in the y-intercept. Okay, so we're going to label those on the graph. That's really important. So you don't have to be exactly um, exactly to scale, but I'm just going to make sure I get the right points in there. The three zeros were negative 2, 1, and 3, as you can see up here. So those are the ones I'm going to use. And then I'm going to think about n behavior and Oh, sorry, I forgot to fill in 18 as well. And you could actually draw it and then label the y-intercept, but I like to do it first, so I'll put the 18 in there. Okay, so now I'm going to use the end behaviors and the orders to help me figure out what the, what the shape of it is going to look like. So this is step two, and the order is step two as well when graphing. So basically the end behaviors tell us, okay, we're going to start down here, and then the order tells us how we go through these zeros. So if the order is 1, then it's going to go through the zero like a line. And if the order is 2, it's going to look like a quadratic. If the order is 3, it's going to look like x cubed, the cubic parent function, and so forth. 
Okay, so I'm going to start from negative infinity because that's what it says, and I'm going to go through negative two like a line because the order is one, and then I'm going to go up through to 18, and you want to kind of do it symmetrically, and you can see that um, my maximum here would probably be above 18 because that would be more symmetrical, so I'm just going to go up like this symmetrically, and then back down. The order of 1 is 1, so I'm just going to go through, and then I'm going to come back up to 3, and you can see that the order of 3 is 2, so you can see I'm approaching it in a curvy manner so that I am making a parabola, and it looks like a parabola right at 3, and just extend your graph down a little bit, and there you go. You connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner, and you have your function, and the last thing you want to do, of course, is label your graph, also making sure that we've labeled our axes, and all of our uh, zeros are really clear, and if they're not, we'll just clarify them a little bit, and there you go. So that's it. All That's all you need to do. You just have to figure out what the zeros are, the order, then the degree, leading coefficient, y-intercept, and end behaviors, and then we graph away. So we're going to do another practice one. Here's another one. So we're going to do it in exactly the same way. Write the zeros. They are negative 10 over 3, 1 half, and 4. And I just like to write x equals so that I remember which ones are which, so it's a little bit clear for me. And then the order. You can see the order is 1, 2, 3. So just write 1, 2, 3. And we add those together. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. That's the degree. And then we can find the um, leading coefficient. It's going to be negative 2 times 3 to the 1 times 2 squared times 1 to the 3. So we just write it out. Make sure you keep those exponents. You're probably going to think, yeah, yeah, I can remember that, but you might forget. And then it will make it very wrong, so just be careful about that. So this ends up being negative 24. And of course, the important part of that is that it is negative. So we'll just write negative next to it. And if you like, you can write even right here. And now that I have these two things, I could write the end behaviors as well. Um, it's up to you. You could do that now or you could do that later. I like to do it right away. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, because it's even, and negative, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. If you don't know those, you can just go back and remind yourself. And then we'll do, oh, I shouldn't have gone down, the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are negative 2 times 10 to the 1 times negative 1 squared times negative 4 to the 3. So y-intercept is, I'll just write it out here, negative 2 times 10 to the 1. Make sure that you get your negatives in there and you put the square, the exponents on the outside, a squared or cubed or whatever. And according to my calculator, this is positive 1280. You can just verify that on your calculator. So of course this is a really big y-intercept and um, I'm not going to make my graph go all the way up, all the way up so it's to scale. Um, so like I said, I don't I don't want to sketch it to scale. I just want to I just want to graph it so I get the idea of it. So um, I'm going to write the zeros in, negative 10 over 3, and 1 half. They should be in order, of course. And x equals 4, just put it over here maybe. And so I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to go up. You can draw your y-intercept in here. As you can see, I'm squishing it down quite a bit. And I start, at, um, I start in the negative, and I'm going through in order 1, then order 2, then order 3. So I'm going to go like this from down here, all the way up, and then again, I just want it to be kind of symmetrical, so I'm just going to try to make it as symmetrical as possible. And then I need it to be going through as a parabola, so actually I'm going to redraw it so that I get through there in a little bit of a more curvy fashion, and just curve it like this, and then you want to come back up and around, and we're going to go through 4 with the cubic shape, so you just go through here with the cubic shape like this, like x cubed, and I should have ended up at the bottom. So if you start with something and you don't actually end up going through the y-intercept that you want, like if the y-intercept was ne negative down here, then we know we made some sort of mistake somewhere and you'd have to double check your work. Um, but everything went through as I had hoped, and if it's ugly, you could just 
um, clean it up a little bit. It's a little bit ugly. You want to try to avoid getting this, getting the uh, go doubling back on yourself so it looks like a function. And then we'll write g of x here. We've labeled our axes as well, and that is it. That's our whole graph. So before we move on, I just wanted to talk about this function, and I wanted to ask you to pause the video, use a quadratic equation to find the zeros, and then put it in factored form. So from the zeros, go to factored form. Okay, so pause the video right now and do that. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you did it. Um, <coughs> so if you use quadratic equation, which is x equals negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which we should all know really well, and you just plug it into the formula, so 9 minus 2 times 4 times negative 5, or whatever order, you can do it in the correct order, <laughs> and we end up with negative 3 plus minus, this is 49, so I'll just put 7 over 4. So we get the x-intercepts, x equals um, negative 3 plus 7 is 4, divide by 4, 1, and x equals negative 3 minus 7 over 4, so negative 10 over 4 is negative 5 over 2. So a lot of people, when they write in factored form, they would have written it like this. They would have written x minus 1 and then x plus 5 over 2. And if you did it this way, you should you should uh, do something to remind yourself, this is wrong, 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 okay? This is wrong. And you can see why, because um, if you were to multiply this out and use FOIL, you would actually get y equals something, um, sorry, y equals x squared. And what we have in the original is that if we have 2x squared, so you'd actually get the wrong answer. So you have to be really careful and make sure that instead of writing it like this, you're going to write, and I'll write in green so you remember, y equals x minus 1, that part was fine, and this 2 is going to go front of the x, 2x plus 5, and we leave the 2 alone in the bottom, and that is the correct answer, okay? And this is really important because in the next part, we're going to be writing the equation of a cubic function that has zeros at negative 2, 3, and 3 over 2. We want to make sure that we write this in the correct format. Okay? So, with this, we want to make sure we're finding the a. Look for a. This is the parent, the family of functions, sorry, not the parent of function, the family of functions, which means there's a lot of different cubic functions that have the same zeros, but only one of them has a y-intercept at 6. So we want to make sure we're finding the y-intercept at 6. So when you write it out, you have to write y equals a times x plus 2, x minus 3, times 3, sorry, 2x <laughs> minus 3, okay? And that comes from here, here, and here. So that's where I get those, and we're looking for the a. And we want it so that we have a y-intercept at 6, which means we have the point zero, 6 on our graph. So we'll just plug that x and y into our equation. So 6 equals a times 0 plus 2, times 0 minus 3, times 2 times 0 minus 3, which is 2 times 9, which is 18, so we get 6 equals 18a, and then a equals 1 over 3. Okay, so when we write the equation, we're going to write y equals 1 over 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. Okay, and by the way, a lot of people like to just write this. They'll write um, y equals a, x plus 2, x minus 3, um, 2x minus 3, and then they'll write uh, plus 6 for their y-intercept. Now this is totally wrong. We're not even in factored form. And this is also not the y-intercept, so this is the wrong way to go. Okay, you got to make sure that you use the a there, and that we plug in the value for 0, 6, and then we'll get the right answer. Okay, and we could do something really similar to that one. Write the equation of a function that's shown. This is actually from page 41 in your textbook. If you think that this um, little diagram is not very nice, it's up to you. And you can see that, well, we probably have a quartic function because we've got one, two, three turning points. We've also got this point, two, four, and you can see that we've got two zeros here. We've got zeros at 
x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. And you can also see that the order is 2 here and 2 for this one as well, because they're both parabolic there. And we're actually not sure what the y-intercept is, but we do have the point 2, 0. So we know that we could plug that in as well. So this is going to be a quartic function. We're going to just go with the simplest possible. I mean, it could be, you know, um, a degree 6 or degree 8 or degree 10 or whatever, but that's pretty complicated. We just want to go as simple as possible. So again, we're going to use the family of functions. We're going to go y equals a times x plus 2 squared, because I changed this number into a plus 2 when you put it into the brackets, and x minus 3 to the 2. We both have orders 2, so 2, 2. And then we're going to plug this point in, so we know that x, y is equal to 2, 4. So x is 2 and y is 4. So we just write it in, 4 equals a times 2 plus 2 squared times 2 minus 3 squared. So this gives us 16, so 4 equals 16a and a equals 1 over 4. And we do expect that it would be a positive number since it is opening upwards, so you can just check your work that way. And we'll just write the answer, so y equals 1 over 4 x plus 2 squared times x minus 3 squared, and do a little victory dance. And there you go, okay? That, it's that easy. All right. So let's do one final one. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x to the 4 plus 2x cubed. So this is actually in standard form, and it is um, something that we did in 3.2, but it is also really easy to factor. So we're going to do that as well. We get x cubed times x plus 2. So we have a few pieces of information here. First of all, we know what the zeros are, um, and so we can write that in the bottom, zeros. Uh, x equals 0, when you have just x, then that's x equals 0, and x equals negative 2. And you can see that the order for those is 3 and 1. And of course, we could see that the degree was 4, and that the leading coefficient was 1. And if you look here, you can see well, there's no constant, so that means the y-intercept was 0. Um, which, you know, you could try out and find out that that is true from the um, factored form as well. So that tells us the end behaviors as well. X approaches a negative infinity, Y approaches positive infinity because this is a positive number and this is even. And as X approaches positive infinity, Y approaches positive infinity as well. So I could actually graph that um, using this information. So zeros at zero and negative 2, and you can just label it. And if it's like pretty far away, then I'll just go there like that. And, um, you know, if you have a 0 at 0, then you probably have a y-intercept at 0, too. And, oh, by the way, I haven't labeled my axes, so i got to do that first. Make sure I get it done. I'm going to go through, um, and I'm going to start from positive infinity, because that's what the end behavior says. I'm going to go through like a cubic function, like this. And then I'm going to turn around, I don't know what the minimum is, I'm just going to go through the negative 2 like a, like a line, and then finish off my graph. And don't forget to label it, and that's it. That's all you need to do. So there we go. You could graph a um, standard form function, and you can also graph a factored form function, and it is pretty easy once you know all of the steps. So you use your zeros, your order, your degree, your leading coefficient, and your y-intercept to find your end behaviors and draw your graph. Thanks for watching and ask me any questions in class.